Hey guys, Jason Scudelaire with CPP, and in front of me is our Classic Fit Premium Till Columns for 55, 56 Chevy cars. They come in chrome and black. Well, let's check it out. How do you know it's a CPP Premium column? It's all in the shipping case. We got our column here. This is a floor shift model. We're gonna be installing a column shift. Got our blinker and tilt levers, hazard knob, and a wiring adapter. All that's left is for us to install this into the car. And while I do that, I'll tell you all the benefits of the column. All right, so we got our column ready to get installed in our 55. What we did is we body matched the paint and you can take any one of our black columns, use some red scotch Sprite to prep it. And then what I did is took the ashtray out of the car, brought it down to our local automotive paint shop where they matched the paint and you can get that in an aerosol can or like we did, I got a pint of paint and squirted it on there. And uh, I just think it, you know, something like this, it really finishes it off and gives it that classy look. So we got a couple different shift levers down here. We are gonna use the one with the bend in it. Comes with all the hardware and your shift lever and tilt and blinker levers and your hazard knob, everything's included with this. One thing I do recommend is when installing a new column, pick up a new rag joint and pick up a new floor plate. It's actually equipped with the seal on it already, comes with the hardware and the clamp. So let's go ahead and assemble the column and we'll go ahead and uh, get it in the car. All right, we're gonna start off by installing the shifter itself. The easiest thing I found out is to take the spring and put it on a small screwdriver. That way you can bring it in to the column, put it in its place and just pull the screwdriver out. Shift lever goes in right after that. And it actually has detents in there that you gotta lock it into. Like that. And then our pin, it's got neurals on the other end. So once you get it into a certain spot, just press the rest of the way in. Once that's down, I just take a little drift, tap it in. So how many people caught that? I actually put the shift lever pin in backwards. Well, I took it back out and put it in the right way. So with the shift lever in, all of our 55 and 56 columns come with the provisions so you can hook up your stock indicator with the cable. In our case, we're running Dakota Digital Gauges, so we will not be running this. Down here, we got our safety neutral switch, which the wiring's already in the car. It's also equipped with your reverse lights. And now we'll go ahead and put our turn signal lever in. All right, we'll screw in our tilt lever. All of our columns come with these brushed aluminum levers. You can get them also in chrome and black separately. I do like these, it's kind of a clean look. And our hazard knob. Again, this just screws in also. There you go. And these columns are already away from your body more than the stock one, which makes it much more comfortable to drive. So we're, what we're gonna do is I wanna maximize the distance between my body and the column. So I'm gonna actually take an inch off the double D down here. That way I can push it all the way into the rag joint and get that thing a little bit further away from our body, kind of get you more into that cruising mode. So let's go ahead and cut that real quick and we will move on to the next step. Okay, we'll go ahead and mark that at the one inch and cut it. If you can use Sawzall, Hacksaw, um, Cutoff Wheel, whatever you have lying around. Again, you don't have to do this. I just like that little more distance in between my body and the steering wheel. All right, so I got my shift lever going and I'm kind of guessing the exact angle it needs to be but I'll fine tune it once it's in the car and you can move this in quarter inch increments. So we'll start off here. So we'll go ahead and slide our floor plate on and we'll get the rag joint on the box first and then we'll install the column. All right, gonna go ahead and put the rag joint on. There is a flat edge on the rag joint. You wanna match that up with your gearbox. All right, got that slid on there. We'll take our Allen bolt and there actually is a little notch on the shaft of the steering box that this is gonna go through. And that keeps that from, once it's tightened, from moving back and forth. All right, and we'll go ahead and grab our Allen. 
<clears throat> there you go. All right, it's time to install the column. Be sure you get your one inch double D secured into the rag joint. Then you got your one inch index hole, which is gonna go on the tab of your column support. Be sure you have this facing the proper way so your bezel fits back on. So let's go ahead and get this in there. There we go. There we go, we're in. All right, so we got everything secured to the dash itself. We've already updated our uh, wire harness, just like our gauges. So we've already got the straight GM plug. So this is gonna be plug and play. All right, so I'm just now getting the floor plate all buttoned up. After this, I will get the safety neutral wires plugged in and we'll move our way to the hood side of the car. There you go. All right, there's that. And here goes our safety neutral switch. There we go. All right, so we've already secured the rag joint to the gearbox. Now we're ready to secure the rag joint to the steering column itself. What I do is put one of the set screws in there, tighten it up, and then come back with a drill bit so I can uh, actually put a little mark where the other set screw is, and then I can drill a little bit of a dimple in there. That way when the set screw goes all the way in, it actually secures itself inside that dimple. Always use Loctite on the set screws, and then you'll come back with your 5 16 nut and lock them down with that. All right, so I'm just tightening up the shift linkage. Um, what I did is made sure that the column was in park, make sure the transmission's in park, adjusted my rod that goes from the column down to the transmission. Now that that's all done, we'll work ourselves back inside and uh, may have to adjust the safety neutral switch, we'll see, but throw the steering wheel on there and uh, I think we'll be about time to go cruise. All right, with our rag joint and everything all hooked up and our shift linkage, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up our clamp to our floor plate. All right, with that done, my safety neutral switch is all hooked up. We can go ahead and turn the car on. Don't go to start it. So our indicator is here on the screen. Reverse seems to be good. Neutral, always keep your foot on the brake the first time you start it, just in case something's a little out of whack, but let's see if we're all adjusted. Sometimes you get lucky, uh, I did it this time, but it's pretty easy to adjust. Uh, the safety neutral switch has two little slots on it, loosen up the screws, you can bring it back and forth, and then you can actually adjust it even more by taking it off. Check out one of our tech guides, it will show you easily step-by-step -step how to do that. We'll go ahead and put the wheel on, and uh, get her out and drive her. So uh, our columns come with this blinker delete and horn button. And this works great when you're running an aftermarket hub like this one, steering wheel package. But we're gonna run a stock style uh, wheel, which we sell here. This one's actually cut down to a 15 inch wheel, so it's not real big since we're running our power steering. You're gonna have to switch over to one of these, which we sell separately. You're gonna place that typically around the 11 o'clock hour. That way it fits right there. Once that's in, you're gonna put your spacer in. The spacer keeps the gap in between here and here from crashing, and then your spring. Be sure your wheels and everything are straight before you get this all centered on there. Put our nut on, and we'll give her a good old tightening. All right, that in place. Go ahead and get our center piece on there. And we'll go ahead and put our center cap on. And I'll get our screw. A little tricky sometimes to get started. And there we go. Very comfortable. I love the distance between my body and the steering wheel. Put that all the way down for your cruising needs. Put it all the way up to get out or in the middle, just wherever you're comfortable. So when you're ready to order your classic car or truck parts, give us a call or visit classicperform.com. For more tech tips, visit teamcpp.com. And for more videos, go to our YouTube channel.